third phase of Moon Radio. Welcome to the show. How are you doing tonight? Good to talk to you. It's been about a year since I talked to you. Same time last year. Uh, this great, is, great. Uh, well, happy holidays. <laughs> happy holidays to you. This is it. I got a lot of news to tell you. Well, uh, I went ahead and told you I was going to get a high definition Sony camera and record a lot of stuff my wife's been recording on her phone. So I started this, and I got hundreds and hundreds of hours of nothing but orbs, different shapes, different sizes. And uh, I came to find out that there are so many around me, pretty much like a Grand Central Station. I can look up in the sky, I can focus my eyesight and the brightness where the sun is shining. And I showed my son, he can see things too, like I can. And I can see them, they blanket the whole sky. They're like white snowballs, vibrating, spiraling, okay? And they're letting off like sparks off of them. And I see them shooting this way, that way, this way, that way, in the hundreds of thousands. So I said, well, this is a lot bigger I thought it was. So I went ahead and did what you, you said to do, see if you could try to make contact with them. So I did. So while my sister, while, while my daughter was gone on college, I went and slept in her bed. And I got there and I started trying to concentrate, try to, you know, get some kind of connection. And I... I went ahead and dozed off, and I, I was turned to the side toward the woods, and all of a sudden, I felt the bed being hit, like, you know, my dog would jump up and down and tap the bed, but it was being tapped from the head all the way down to the feet, and I felt myself, I couldn't get out of that sleep, it was like a, like I was in a deep trance harder and harder and harder till it was lifted all the way up till it was like oh almost flipping me off the bed and I see myself in this hole deep hole and there's a bright light above me and that was my subconscious was buried in this hole I seen I remember when I told you I was being taken all them times when I was a young boy and my uh and whatever happened to my nephew but I remember now, they would put me in this deep, deep hypnosis-like state of mind where they can control you. If they can't keep you under, they will not take you. If they can't have you 100% under. So I felt it, kept on bumping and bumping, and I woke my eyes up. I woke out of it. And my daughter has a bright neon light uh, clock on the side. And... When it hit me that last time and almost went off the bed, I spun around on the bed to see what was there. And right there was an orb, big orb, fluorescent. You could see the outer edges just vibrating right there. Then all of a sudden, you could see it shoot off because that big, bright neon light my daughter's got. So that happened that, that night. Then two nights later, I was sleeping in my son's bed. I went ahead and put a, a air bed on top of it, make it high, make it more comfortable. And he was going with some friends, and I spent the night in his bed. And I was laying in the middle of the bed, and I was doing the same thing, trying to, you know, make some kind of contact. Then I seen, you know, I went ahead and fell asleep. Then all of a sudden, I felt I was in this deep, deep, bottomless pit again. And I could see the light in front of me. My subconscious was trying to peer through like a portal. And that was my subconscious. And they was trying to hold me down in there. And uh, I felt their hands from my shoulder down to my leg, both sides of the, the bed. And this bed was raised up to about my waist height. I'm about 6'4". And they was on both sides of me, shaking back and forth my body. And what they was trying to do is see if they could keep me under. And I started waking out of it. As soon as I was starting to get out of this state of mind, I heard 
out of my ears on both sides, the crinkling of the air bed where they was crawling off the bed. And they was crawling off the bed. I could hear a crinkling of the air bed. Okay, this happened. And uh, two weeks ago, I was in my daughter's bed while she's off of college. And I felt I, was in the, I wasn't asleep. I was just, something was telling me or some, something was around me. And I had my arms back toward the, the headboard of the bed up on some pillows, both my arms. All of a sudden, I felt like hands were going down along my side underneath the bed, underneath the mat of the bed, up and down my, my body. And I looked up at my other hand. I had a fi- I had made a fist pull my hand away. It's like it was frozen there. And I looked over there toward it. And I kept on trying to pull, and I was pulling myself toward the, uh, the head of the bed. Then I tried pull, looked over to my other arm, and I was trying to pull it loose. I couldn't pull it. Then all of a sudden, I felt myself go out. They knocked me out pretty much for a brief few seconds, about a minute, and I seen them leaving the room, like into a, like a portal, and they was leaving. I realized now, Dutch's was pretty much stopped when I was in my 20s. They took me so many times where I built up a uh, endurance against their mind control, and that's what they're trying now to take me, but they cannot take me under like they used to. And that's why they stopped when I was in my 20s. I used to always come come out of it when I was on their home world. I remember times I was on their home world while I was being observed by the supreme beings and, uh, and the graves would be all around me. And uh, I remember when I was in their ship, when they was taking me through like a long corridor and see all these tubes down along there with bodies in them. Like there's like incubators. I don't know what they were. But I remember all kinds of little tidbits and stuff. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I know now this is a lot bigger than I thought it was. A lot bigger. It's like they watch us 24-7. They're 4 7 every day. I feel the presence around us. I can see them flying around in the in the room, just like a plasma field, dark plasma field, constantly. And uh, I'm gonna start taking more footage this uh, this summer or this winter when the leaves are all down. It's a lot better to get footage. So I went and bought a bunch of. Uh, SD cards, and I'm going to start shooting a lot of footage now. Now, that's a good idea. That That's a good idea. Do you know what kind of blood type uh, are you? Are you RH negative by any chance? Oh, right off hand, I have to ask my wife, but uh, they're in the other room watching a movie, so I'm in, in, my, in our bedroom sitting here. But uh, it's like Grand Central Station. That's all I can say. I sent you some footage. On my on your uh, email, I, I haven't heard nothing back from you. I've done this uh, November sixteenth, and I, I wanted to show you the supreme beings. They're in this great big orb, and they got a lot of little orbs inside. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna let you in some some secrets here. These orbs are not just orbs, okay? These orbs are interdimensional doorways. Okay, they will come in and out of these interdimensional orbs. They're like crafts. They can come in and out of their dimension into our dimension. I watched them do it. I've been around them almost all my life. Uh, the green mask that my wife shot that day, and she has a lot of footage on, you know, and I sent you little pieces of it on video because uh, it's too long I only let set small fragments uh, videos of the, my dog sitting there she was videotaping the dog and 
had these white orbs shooting all around the dog, coming up out of the floor and everything. And she she shot a lot of footage, and I have too. I'm shooting a lot well, yeah, more we, now. Yeah, we want to see that video. We want to see them. I think I've seen some of them. Like you said, you've got thousands of hours of videos. We get thousands of videos. And, yeah, we, we watch uh, everyone very closely. And so far, uh, we're looking at your footage. Maybe we're missing some of the compelling footage that we, you really want us to see. But what, well, I, a, suggest a, to you, a, what I suggest is yeah. what you need to do is uh, get a YouTube channel and upload your YouTube videos or your, you know, your UFO yeah, I gotta videos. Get a laptop. Your, uh, that, I gotta that's get very a real important. Good laptop to do that. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a YouTube channel? Sure, I'd like to hear it, but that's the big thing. Maybe we'll get to that. But right now, we got you on the radio show, and you said you've been to other planets and you've been aboard extraterrestrial craft. And now that's things yes. our listeners really, really want to uh, get some knowledge on. So, can you explain to me what other, what was the name of the planet? How did you get there? Uh, if you can start from the so beginning, that'd be great. Well, well, the name of the planet, I didn't know. I don't really know. I just know that they had me on their planet, I guess, because it was blue skies, white clouds. And it's like a dome. And the beans, the spring beans, the ones created the grades as workers, uh, they were all along the, I don't know, it was like doctors on the operating room watching down at you. But I was laying on this. Uh, it was like a uh, LED big flat plate like I was laying on it naked and and it was gigantic and I was laying on it and all of a sudden I lifted up and they was taking me and moved me slow you know upside down moved me all kind of directions I don't know looking at me and uh, that happened. I remember that. That happened quite a bit. Um, on her ship, I remember being took up. I remember, you know, being took up through my ceiling. It looked like the ceiling was like a, uh, like a plasma like field, and the ceiling just opened up, and I could see the ship above there pulling me straight up and taking me. That happened quite a bit, and I've seen them come through the walls. But uh, I just know there are probably billions of years ahead of us technology. Just the technology I've seen them use and what they could do, and the orbs are everywhere. I, uh, I mean, I went and picked up eight more SD cards to the really good ones, and I'm going to start videotaping some more because all the leaves are starting to fall off, and that's the best time because I'll see them flying all around the house, backyard, through the woods, and inside the house, and it's just, it's just an awesome sight just to watch them. And it's like they leave a plasma trail like a comet going through the woods, and I'll see them coming up out of the woods, large ones, and going real slow, but most of them are traveling around 70, 80 miles an hour. And uh, I can watch them lots of times. I can just go out there and coffee and, and uh, sit out there and watch them. It's like a, they leave like a dark plasma field when you see them with my naked eye. And my son can see them too. And I showed him how he could see them in the sky on a bright day when it's totally bright and you're in the shade, you can look up, you can see them spiraling all around the sky. This is this is quite a bit bigger than I ever thought it was going to, you know, be when I started Absolutely. really getting involved. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what? How about this? How about this? We're going to take a quick break. You say your wife is next door in the next room over there. Why don't you go in, ask your wife what kind of blood type you are. We're going to take a quick break and just... Go ask her. See if you can figure out what blood type you are. It's really important. People need to know. And uh, stand by, everybody. This is Third Phase Moon. We'll be right back, everybody. All right.
Coach Fade the Moon Radio. We're back live, everybody, taking your calls from around the world. This is Third Phase of the Moon, and uh, let's bring back the caller. I'm hoping he could get the answer to us, what kind of blood type he is, because uh, you got it? Yeah. I'm O positive. My wife said she's pretty sure I'm O positive. O positive. Okay, okay. Well, we hear that. Uh, thanks for doing that. I appreciate that. People were asking no a question, problem. and we got to... Got to get the questions in. Got to get the questions in, and uh, that's important. We get the answers. That's uh, great. Now yeah. let's get back to uh, this planet that you are in. We didn't get the name. You didn't. They didn't give you a name of it. You said it was blue skies. Did you feel any kind of a? What about the gravity? Any kind of people are asking. Did you feel different? Was the gravity a little different than planet Earth? Well, on the when I was on the floor, I remember that they was raising me up. They had this like this white beam on me from the floor up. I felt it, t- you know, take me up in the air. And when I was up there, I could see it was like a glass dome over top of us. Okay, and the round was the city was outside. Okay, and it looked like a city you would never imagine. There's this, uh, you could barely see the tops of them when I was up that high. And uh, they had me going around and around the circles and flipping this way and that way real slow. And uh, I could see them watch it. And uh, there, that's the only thing I can remember of that, the white clouds and blue skies. And there was two planets. That's all I can remember. It was two planets, one big one, one small one behind it. And that was basically it on that. And then uh, and being aboard the ship, being aboard the ship, what what is different about any other kind of craft that you were in besides uh, that would that you would be uh, being on for transportation, an uh, airplane or a vehicle, a car? What what makes this so extraterrestrial and out of this world? Well, when they was taken, well, the first time when they first took us, me and my nephew, I was telling you. They took us on the craft, but we went through like the, we was in the living room. And when they had us, this white beam hit us and took us through the picture window, it's like going through water, but not being, getting wet. And we blacked out. And I know I did. And uh, we never talked about it not until he stayed with me, came up from uh, Florida and stayed with me when I was in my 30s. And I talked to him for a few minutes about it, and he said, you know, yeah, what happened to us? You know, I try to bury it because it's too intense, and they've always been with me. I said, okay, that's one thing I wanted to hear from you. And he said, but after this, this, you know, you talking to me about this, I'd rather not even talk about it no more. So he pretty much, that's the first and only time we ever talked about it, about it, but when they did take us, I do have memories of them taking us on a like this craft, <clears throat> a long stretch corridor, and I seen tubes and bubbling on the bottom coming up, and I seen look like humanoids in the tubes down through this long par- cor- uh, corridor on both sides. I could not move my body. I could not move my eyes. All I could see is from my side of vision. I seen them coming when I was going down this aisle. And it seemed like the aisle went on for miles and miles. I mean, it was, it was this long corridor. And I figured we was on a ship. We could have been on a planet. I don't know. But the other times is when, you know, I seen them take me up from my bed when I was a young boy up to the ceiling. And I could see it was the bottom of a ship because the lights was, you know, shooting outwards. And there was a white, like light in the middle. And that would draw me up to the ship. And when I got close to it, I would black out. That'd be it. And other times is, is when they had me in a large room. And uh, they was always watching over me while they worked on me, the Supreme Beings. And uh, the ships, you know, when they wanted to come and get you, if they could keep you under, 
they would bring a ship down to get you. They're just going to watch over you and be around you. They're going to be in these orbs because they're they're pretty much in their own dimension. These crafts, and when they're coming around, they're watching you coming through your your ceilings, your floors. I've I've even seen them on newscasts when I'd be watching a newscast, and I could see them zigzagging behind a news reporter. And I've seen them on <clears throat> newscasts when they're uh, reporting about this guy ro- did a robbery and he was being videotaped with this night vision. And I've seen this orb flying all around him, watching him. You know, they're everywhere. That's all I can say. And yeah, absolutely. The crowd, they are. They they are everywhere, no doubt about it. But some people uh, want to ask you this question, and what's um, I they got two questions for you. But quickly, can you you said to us right just a few moments ago that your nephew, you're the uncle, you're the older guy, uh, you know, the yeah. the uncle, and now the yeah. nephew's saying he only talked to you once about this experience, and only once. And once, what is yeah, he doing right today? At, is, is he okay? Well. Well, he, we don't contact each other. It's strange. It's, it's so strange. I mean, after that night, we walked back out of the living room and walked into the kitchen where his mom and my brothers were at, half-brothers and half-sister. And I seen we were gone for over four hours to the clock on the wall. And we just was in kind of like a state of shock. And the next morning... It was like we were told not ever talk about this, okay? We didn't talk about it the rest of that summer when I was down there for, you know, summer vacation. And uh, even, you know, when we ran into each other later on, when we was older, teenagers, you know, we never, ever talked about it. I mean, it, it pretty much scared us so much or was this in a state of shock where, Maybe they told us not to talk about it, you know, because people would have thought we were crazy. And, you know, if I didn't have the photos and the videos I got now, people would think I was crazy because I got proof now. Uh, I got proof of the orbs and everything else. They say, oh, my God, what have you got? What's going on around you? Won't you move? I said, I can't, I mean, they follow me everywhere I go. I said, I can move anywhere. They're always there. And they say, man, I I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. I said, well, there's a lot of weird things happen to me. Uh, You know, it's it's there. It's something I got to deal with. Yeah, uh, another question uh, coming in. Another question. Let me, some people are saying, wow, that's quite, what a, Interesting story between you and your nephew. And in its own case, it sounds like he needs to come and, you know, speak out about his experience. Get it off his chest. It's a lot easier to get this off your chest and tell people like, hey, look, this really happened. My uncle could back me up. My uncle was there with me as well. And something something out of this world, uh, you know, affected us. But here's a question coming in. And some people are asking, do you feel some kind of like, extra vibration through your spinal column because after alien abductions apparently there's some of this uh, effect happening well it's like an extra sense I have when I can feel them around me uh, I feel the presence of when I'm sleeping lots of times I will wake up out of sleep I will know like they're trying to probe my mind or whatever they're trying to do. And it'd be lots of times, you know, I just can't sleep, but I can feel their presence. And it's like that one, that last time they just, I don't know what it was. I was just laying there in bed and I had my arms spread out and, you know, my hands was almost touching the headboard. And I had my fist, I had this made up and I don't know why. Then all of a sudden, I felt hands going up and down underneath the, the pad. And I, I looked up at my hand, and I said, hey, they're here. I know they're here. And they're all around me. And, uh, I mean, there's more than one was in there. So 
I try to pull my arm back down like this so I get out of bed see if I try to communicate with them somehow. And that's all I want to do is communicate with them. But they, they're more interested in taking me for some reason. I don't know. They want me off this planet for some reason. But that's their main focus now. And they just can't keep me under. I'll stay under for maybe a minute or two. But I build up an endurance against them so much where I can snap out of it down. Well, let me uh, let me thank you so much for you sharing your uh, experience. And, um, you know, you spoke to us last year at Third Phase Moon, and why not you call us back next year and give us a, another update around this time. And we would look forward to uh, having you back on the show because uh, – And any good videos, we'll be taking a look at them. You know how to send them. And we watch all the videos submitted from around the world. And my email – is in the about page. Upload those videos to YouTube. Copy paste those links and uh, send it to us. We want to see them. Uh, we got time for maybe uh, one more call, everybody. We're gonna get to it just after this uh, quick break. Stand by. Third phase of moon. We're live, third phase of moon. You've seen us watching uh, us live lately on third phase of moon. We've got more live videos coming for you. It's been a lot of fun and uh, incredible locations here in the state of Hawaii and uh, Los Angeles and around the world. We're going to be broadcasting live to you. You you won't be disappointed because uh, you won't believe we're we're going to be showing up. And don't forget, you have to subscribe. Obviously, if you're a subscriber, that's great. And we love all our subscribers, but all our new subscribers and our present subscribers, make sure you hit that bell to be notified. Hit that bell, ring it, and it will ring you when we upload in regards to our live feeds coming through. It's quite exciting. And you know what? Some of these uh, live feeds will only last for a short period of time. Uh, they'll be up afterwards for maybe an hour, maybe two hours, but uh, some of them won't uh, last for more than 24 hours. And we will uh, be making room for more videos as they come into uh, our channel, so make sure you subscribe for those Third Phase Moon updates on our live feeds because uh, it's for our subscribers. We do it for our subscribers because uh, they think it's a lot of fun, and we think it's a lot of fun as well, so uh, that's why we're going to keep doing it. Now, let's get to one, a caller. Let's, somebody's calling into Third Phase Moon, and I think we got air code 770 there. 770 made it to the show. We've got a few minutes Ooh. left. Uh, welcome. welcome. Yeah, you're you're with us. You got something on your mind? Let's hear it. Thanks. N- nothing really. We're just kind of listening in. <laughs> oh, oh, I know. Okay, we'll get to the next caller. Appreciate it. And uh, let's see. Maybe uh, we'll move to air code uh, 561. 561, you there? Yes, I'm there. Hey, how's it going? Oh, a little uh, choppy there, a little choppy on that one. Hmm. Lines are building up over here. Let's see. Oh, chops. It's ch- oh, well. We'll just go to error code seven seven zero, and uh, we're gonna tap him. Whether because he was coming in clear. That's good. I, I go to clear lines. So, what's <clears throat> getting you excited at third phase of moon recently? Have you been seeing some of our live? Uh, episodes is this me yeah 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 it's you man you're on we're okay we put you on Uh, (laughs) (laughs) nothing really man uh i've we've called in before Uh, i'm just kind of sitting here with my 
buddy of mine and uh you know we listen in from time to time and uh to see what's going on and uh yeah what what do you think of uh, the last caller the our previous caller uh, and his yeah, story I mean, is kind of, you okay. know that that caller reminds me of the uh what is it the Stardust Ranch you know the guy I don't you know I think that's the name of the ranch Yeah absolutely you know a lot of experiences are uh similar in a lot of ways i imagine you know they have right. their uh routine I, I would not every you know if they're abducting all these people around the world i'm sure every single abduction has a protocol to it they're not making it up as they go for each abduction they, they're doing it by the book i'd imagine yeah yeah hey uh have you heard anything from the jack the rancher have you has has he sent you any more photos or anything or any videos yeah, you know, it it reminds me of Jack's story, absolutely. And Jack, uh, we haven't heard from Jack for, it's been, oh, what, about eight months? Almost a, yes. approaching a year it's now. Really so, enough. yeah, we haven't heard from uh, Jack, unfortunately. I was hoping we we're going to hear from him, uh, maybe, Didn't hopefully, get him on, uh, get yeah. him on no, see what's yeah. but No, no film, video, no video, no, no video, contact. Okay. But, again, I'm not those that kind of guy that wants to go and, uh, pressure people into submitting footage or stories. If they got something they want to share, then let them share it to us. So I'm hoping he does reach out. No doubt about it. Any uh, right. any predictions for 2018 uh, that's going to be uh, that you're looking forward to uh, in the new year in regards to this uh, phenomenon? I don't know. You know, I mean, I, I can't say that I see a lot of it, but I have seen it. You know what I'm saying? And Who's to say? I, I'm just waiting to hear myself. One of those, if you know what I mean. Absolutely. Well, appreciate uh, talking with us over here at Third Phase Moon. And, uh, yeah, happy holidays, man. Happy holidays. We'll uh, take a, another caller, see if they've got an opinion of the previous caller that shared their incredible experience today. I'd have to say it was, it was pretty good, and he answered our questions. 902, you there? I'm here. Do you oh, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Yeah, we've got a few minutes. Uh, what's on your mind? Awesome. Uh, any uh, any opinions of the well, previous uh, caller? No, I just tuned in. I just missed it because you guys have a new time now. So uh, I just want to let you know, I'm calling from Nova Scotia, Canada. And uh, you guys have been talking about the Jackhead Indian Reserve stuff, right? How there's nobody knowing anything about it? Yeah, you know, Manitoba, Jackhead Indian Reserve, we talked to... Uh, one of the guys in charge over there and the crash that happened uh, years ago. And there's been some recent sightings over there over Manitoba. We've been saying that uh, years ago that there's something that happened. And since that day, yeah. it's been happening there over is, and over. I got a friend who, uh, well, my friend's dad works in a pretty prominent place in the UFOlogy world. And uh, he told me straight up, he said, it, wasn't, it was not a plane that went down. He said, why do you think they scrambled jets afterwards? It's supposed to be a recovery mission for getting, like, small craft, like a rescue mission. So, you know, why would you scramble two jets instead of, like, sending out a helicopter to rescue people that uh, possibly are still alive? You know, so he said it wasn't. It was not a, a craft, an aircraft that went down. So it would be nice to know what it was, but it wasn't a plane. So that's nice to know. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, uh, first-hand accounts yeah. definitely come in handy. And we're getting a lot of accounts from different sources that day, and it was an amazing few days that it basically is equivalent to the 1947 Roswell cover-up, if you ask me. that uh, That's what happened. And, uh, you know, sure. ever since that, it's close. a major I media blackout. That funnel, the, the water funnel that comes out of that battleship, I live not far from there. You guys put that on your site a couple of years ago, big water spout coming down. So I live close to that area. And they're chemtrailing the hell out of us over here. And it's just crazy stuff going on on this planet. Well, you know, that's why uh, Third Phase of Moon's here. And I appreciate you calling in. You keep an eye out what's going on over uh, there in Canada. It's a big place. And, uh, you know, things are going on 24-7. Every minute of the day, there's some activity above our skies. All you have to do is look up and you'll see them. And don't forget... Uh, get that camera and have that steady hand when you do. And submit that video to us right here at Third Phase Moon. We're, we're going to be broadcasting again next week, Friday. Everybody, 
Yep. Again, the new time, it's uh, it's going to be 11 p.m. if you're in New York and uh, 8 p.m. if you're in Los Angeles. This is Third Phase of Moon, and we're going to be uploading new videos just submitted to us right here in regards to the UFO phenomenon. And stay tuned for more live streaming episodes. It gets quite insane, quite insane. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you. Flight. We have landed on the moon. Control, this is flight. We have landed on the moon.